Uh, today we got a, a really kind of poignant show where we're talking about the latest trends that came out. There's a big Zoom update this week that we're going to kick off stuff, uh, kick off the episode with. And then we're going to talk about uh, after the sale, short form or using short form video after the sale. So that means um, to one, to train your customers, to give them a, a great kind of unboxing experience, even when you're running, you know, a online business or a marketing agency uh, for all of your clients, it works as well. And then we're going to kind of talk how you can use short form video strategically to increase retention rate for clients, whether they purchase off you, not just once. You know, you develop a loyal following of people who purchase off you for years to come. But we're putting a face to the brand, and that's what short form video really does. Uh, so, Tom, yeah, heading into it, one of my favorite things that, uh, or one of the the awesome things that I saw this week with the Zoom updates, was a extension that's called Read AI. So I just used this this morning uh, while talking to somebody. Uh, he's given me the okay to go through this with you. Uh, essentially, what this is, is it records the entire conversation. It just is a third seat in the, in the conversation. But if you can see here, as we went through, it basically just breaks down everything that happened. And it's a sales tool. So we can see here, if we go to like the recap section, what it's doing is one, it gives us like a summary of everything we talked about, the chapters, topics. This is all similar to stuff I saw in Zoom before. But over here, um, what you can look at, maybe I can get a little more space here. Nope. Whatever happened right there. Right hand side. Use that. Look at the arrow on the right hand side. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Yeah, it's new here. Essentially what it's doing is it's rating uh, or ranking how engaged the person on the other end of the call is while I'm talking. It gives me a score, like how, how engaged I am compared to other people on Zoom calls. And then it's also ranking the participant, uh, the sentiment of what was said, like the attitude we're using. And when it's checking the attitude, the attitude is actually based on it's looking at that other person's face. If this is a sales call, oh, what it's doing is it's looking at their face and afterwards it's letting me know how engaged they were. So like, think about how powerful that is as a sales tool. Also, it's ranking basically the style that I'm, you know, the tone that I'm speaking in, how engaged I am, how energetic I am. Uh, also, if I have any bias. So like, am I being positive? Am I being negative with the tone? Um, you know, it's also checking other things like camera on camera off. If you get in a sales call and the person turns their camera off, there's basically like no way you're going to sell them. Right. Uh, and then it also breaks it down to just different highlights. So like, for example, here, when I'm talking about certain key points, it's ranking or it's rating how engaged they were. Right. So for some of these, you know, I said, at one point, he was having an issue with his website. He couldn't do what he needed it to do. And it's looking at his face. You can see it just goes down. It's this is where his frustrations were. Now, if I'm talking to you about your business and I'm, you know, just talking about, yeah, so it's great. I know you're great at getting leads, but, you know, are you good at making sales? And then all of a sudden your face changes and it's built in there. That's huge. Um, the, the gentleman that I was speaking to before, is head of a sales department with about 80 people in it. And basically when we saw that breakdown, like, you know, the effectiveness that this is going to have when you're selling, you know, sorry, when you're training new sales representatives is absolutely crazy. You know, you can see, you know, it ranks how much time I spend talking versus how much time you spend talking. Wow. You know, like for a sales call, that's huge. You know, you want to know what your problem is in your sales call? You do all the talking or you speak monotone or like, dude, and it's big data. What it has the ability to do is basically then group together all of the conversations that I've had, and it'll be able to give me a, a report that summarizes all of that. You know, I would expect there's going to be certain things like, you know, Kevin's great at a meeting at 9 a.m. He's terrible at a meeting at 7.30 p.m. 
based on these things. You know, like it lets you stack the deck in front of you. It lets you know which scripts are working, which topics work. I've only done this once, but holy cow, the the possibilities are absolutely endless. I can see that only that space only growing too. I mean, I know there's some earlier AI companies to the market that do that. And just with the growth in uh, integrating, um, I think it's it's so crazy because what came to mind for me with that is um, something I had picked up from, you know, one of our other coaches in terms of how they use that for their uh, virtual sales calls as well. Um, same key points, right? Uh, making sure you have a relationship, you're asking most of the questions, but your prospect or potential customer is the one that's doing most of the answering, right? Because you need to understand they need to be heard, right? Um and then on top of that, being able to have your proven sales scripts there and available for your team uh, whenever that objection does come up in the conversation, right? So it's like, if you think about that, what came to mind from just that that background context is, uh, have you seen the NVIDIA eye contact tool? It's an, it's an AI. It's a software that allows you to basically, no matter where you're looking, it, it, it makes your eyes looking at the camera. I was, I'm, I'm curious to see if, and because I haven't played with this yet, right? I'm curious to see if that that software from NVIDIA, you could plug into Zoom and it's almost like you can actually have a newer salesperson kind of like look over at the script if they needed to, but then have their eyes still making contact with that prospect as a, that would be wild, right? But honestly, when I looked at this, the natural conclusion for me is what they're actually doing is they're using all this bio recognition face technology mm -hmm. within two, three years, it's going to be AI sales representatives. That's because they're they're just now have the ability to do it at mass with millions of sales reps a day, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, that seems like the logical conclusion. Maybe I'm being short sighted and I'm only seeing the first answer. I don't know two, three folds after that. But in terms of like immediate impact, what's going to happen? It lets it emailed me a report directly after. It highlighted the you know two three main issues that that made him frustrated, and then the two or three main points that made him happy. It gave me a recap of the meeting as well as action items. So, yeah, again, it's not necessarily breaking. You know, like a lot of programs do similar parts, but I was still very very shocked. And when I showed it to him afterwards, he was like his mind went off because he's got to trail in sixty to hundred sales reps. That's fascinating. Dude, that's it's it's so crazy. Mm. So, do you have anything uh, that kind of jumped out at you this week, or do you want to hop right into our main topic? Yeah, I think um, just the one thing that kind of came up this week was how the nuances between actually utilizing um, OpenAI, right, and its API as opposed to using ChatGPT. Uh, I was on a, a, a webinar yesterday, um, and they were talking about those nuances. So. The interesting thing about it is some of the objections, this was a sales webinar, right? And I was on the uh, the side being sold and I, and I knew it, but then there was, so, there was a lot of nuances to be able to unpack. One, the way in which the person that was actually pitching, right, was delivering. So it was more of like a coaching moment, me taking copious notes, knowing that my credit card was already out and ready to kind of give the darn man money, right? But then also understanding like how they're able to utilize AI and build it on top of their all already proven system and business, right? And that's what you can't really replicate, if you will, right? Some of the sales objections were, well, I already have this software tool. Why why do I have to pay for your recurring uh, model and your and effectively like your white labeled version of the software when I already have that and I have open AI, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the team, the, the sales team was like, well, that it's not that simple. You don't just plug and play. The nuances, the nuances are the IP that we've been uh, we've developed over the past decade of doing this in our business, right? Mm -hmm. And when you plug that in, right now, the 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 brain of the machine understands your systems, your processes, so that the outputs are aligned with what used to normally take you a decade of experience to basically learn how to do, right? And then also be able to implement that at a manual level. So you have the skill set of the actual person that understands the that understands what they're doing and then being able to process each piece of that framework to put that system together. And it's an entire marketing stack for like say a new business or um, for an existing business, it, all from, for instance, um, the same framework, right? So the difference is the nuance of the actual uh, niche or industry in itself. And it outputs something that would normally take um, hours, if not multiple days, right? Now it's condensed it, the timeframes into actual minutes. And that to me was fascinating because the TLDR for me is 
you and I have been in this business for you know close to a decade. So we're going on almost two decades combined, right? So how are we able to, and I'm envisioning like the matrix, right? Up, just mm. upload, just plug me in, upload the info. Mm. That's kind of what I saw in terms of the aha moment as I was listening to uh, that, that webinar yesterday. It's like, you have your framework, plug AI into it, have it understand what you want it to do. Now these newer inputs, say from our clients, right? From our prospects, we're able to then have those inputs go in instead of to us, to our machine, where AI can drive that and get the outputs that are really typically closer to us, or at least gets us to that at least destination version one a lot faster. Yeah, it gets to the refinement step. Uh, you know, I know I say this every week, but like, you know, AI is artificially intelligent. It is not intelligent. If mm -hmm. you just try that day one, you know, as soon as I feel like I have my my handle on how I'm using certain things, it'll just, you know, 25 right answers in a row and then boom, 40 wrong answers in a row. Like the the thing that drives me crazy is like just the repetitiveness and the the obvious fake language that comes out of it a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, it it can it's like steroids for your brain. It's steroids for your process. It's steroids for basically everything. But just like real steroids, you still got to do the work. You know, you can't just you can't just do steroids and get jacked. You still got to work out. You still got to go hit a thousand home runs. All that same kind of thing, right? So. Just because intelligence is in the name doesn't mean it's actually intelligent, but man, what an absolute tool. That sounds like I made fun of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, with that, let's hop into today's main topic. And it's, um, I came across this article through HubSpot. I use a lot of HubSpot uh, with my clients. Yep. Uh, and it's just in their like marketing trends for June of 2023. Uh, this kind of stood out to me. So like number one, um, the marketing channels that people are really using are still traditional ones, you know, like their short form video, social media, uh, influencer marketing, but 90% of the marketers, you know, everybody knows short form video is where it's at. That's what's popping right now. Short form video is basically done in a vertical uh, orientation, anything that's like a minute or less. Uh, this is kind of a new thing new stat though 56 percent of the marketers are planning to put more into tiktok i've done that a lot over the last six months i have not found the same delivery rates from tiktok as i have from other platforms mm -hmm. you know for me in terms of like getting stuff delivered google ads meta tiktok right like it's you know it's the intention and maybe the the audience age you know there's a bunch of different things that can go into that 